stuff. Everything in life is a choice. And we made ours 10 years ago. It has been many years of work in progress. And it will probably be a few more. But make no mistake. You will get to where you want to go and achieve everything you set out to achieve. The journey has been anything but easy. But who wants easy? The many paths promising least resistance, all going downstream. Problem is, we are headed upstream. We will run down all barriers that stand in our way and break that ceiling. But first, let's take you back to where it all started. We all met in Kibira, one of the world's largest slums situated in the Kenyan capital of Nairobi. 2008. I was 23 at the time and the boys were all between 10 and 13 years of age. We were all born and raised up here. This is the place we call home. On these streets, hopelessness is outstanding. Abject poverty is real. The youth here have very few opportunities, if any. To make a better life for themselves or their families. But the greater our problems were, the greater they resolve. Despite facing these and many other challenges, we soldier on. We didn't want to be like everyone else. We wanted to be different. We wanted to dream bigger and achieve higher goals. And we believe we are not just doing this for ourselves, but for every youth in Kibira, so that one day they might be able to say, I want to do this, or I want to do that, then go ahead and achieve it. My name is Kennedy Ocheng, 23 years of age. I'm training for Duathlon World Championship. And I believe in life you can achieve anything you want if you are willing to work for it. Because nothing comes in a silver plate. In my training, I run 20 km and 50 km cycling per day. Training is very hard, you know. It requires a lot of hard work and dedication. In Spain, I am competing in elite under 23 category and I am hoping to place in top 10. Kennedy is the one person who came out of obscurity, born in prison to a terminally ill mother and a father he never knew. He had to start working at a very young age. When I first enlisted him for the athletic program, he didn't believe he could run. But today, he's the most promising athlete in the team. And should everything go to plan, his will be the most unlikely sports story you'll ever hear. My name is Edio Diambo, 21 years old. I have been training at Vincent since I was 11. My running life has not been easy. Doing sport has really changed the way I see things and has made me strong. I hope to compete at age group standard duathlon category in Puerto Vedra. I finished fourth last year in multi-world championship in Denmark and I hope to earn a podium spot in Spain. Eddie is perhaps the least talented guy in our team, but that also means he works the hardest. What I like most about him is that you can throw anything at him in training and he will take it without complaint. He understands that hard work beats talent, where talent doesn't work hard. At the moment, we're training for the World Duathlon Championships in Spain this April. It's a self-sponsored trip. This will be a second time after an appearance in Denmark in 2018. But I believe we are better prepared and better ready this time. It can be demanding trying to be a coach and athlete at the same time. Because as a coach, sometimes you need to take time to observe the athletes and helping them improve from an observatory role. I'm often right there in the, in, the, in the swing of things, 
kicking it out with the boys. We have had many long moments in this journey, but in many ways, what keeps us going is the faith and the belief that we can do it. It may take months, it may take years, but all we have to do is just keep going. One day at a time. Equipment and specialized nutrition are the main challenges. I mean, we train four to five hours a day, but simply don't have the equipment to facilitate it or nutrition to match it. In many ways, duathlons, much like triathlons, are said to be the rich man's sport. In this respect, we don't quite fit the criteria. For instance, the average bike at the World Championships will cost in excess of $10,000. That's a million shillings. This is actually double our annual training budget for the team. We have one bike that costs around $80,800, but the others are mostly steel and aluminium frames that will easily pass for vintage in the Western world. And you could probably say that it's the rider, not the bike. But what if your bike costs you a second every kilometer? That will be 40 seconds at the end of the race. And in a sport of such fine margins, 40 seconds could easily be the difference between 1st place and 20th place.